Hey guys, so today's video is a little different. As you can see by the title, I'll be talking about what I use for my vlogging settings with the Canon G7X. Obviously, if you're watching this video, it's because you probably made a good purchase and you purchased this beautiful vlogging camera. I know you guys probably see this, you know, you see multiple videos on like the settings that pe most people would use when vlogging with this camera. So I wanted to go over my settings and how uh, and what I use when vlogging. All right, so first thing first, before I jump into the settings, I wanted to show you guys the memory card I would use, let it focus. Okay, so this is the memory card I use for HD good quality. It's always gonna be 128 gigabytes. I do have like a 32 or 64. Uh, I don't know where they are. Again, I don't use those often. Um, that's probably why I don't know where they are. But yeah, this is the main memory card I always use. Extreme Pro or Ultra for great quality videos. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the settings of the Canon G7X. So when shooting my vlogs, I always use the movie mode. Reason being is that when shooting in movie mode and you wanna control your aperture, you can actually control it by clicking on the movie mode here. And then you just click this movie mode that says M. And then from there, it'll tell you that you can set aperture and shutter speed for max flexibility. So I only keep it at movie mode. Uh, if I ever want to use pictures, then I'll um, I'll change it to manual mode in general, so that way I can play around with the aperture as well as the ISO. So yeah, keep it in standard. So the second setting I want to show you guys is the autofocus face tracking setting. I always keep it on AF with the smiley face because it tracks your face like if you're vlogging you want the camera to always track your face so you're always in focus and not blurry there is a way to register your face in the settings which i'll go over in a minute the next setting i want to go over is the third setting which uh, is the image quality not many people uh, take pictures with this camera but i spent a lot of money on this camera so i'm going to use it for pictures if this is the only camera i have Granted, the iPhone does take better pictures, but you know, this takes good pictures. You know, it's better for video, but if you have an iPhone that's a 12 Pro Max or up, then yeah, the camera may come out better. But I've gotten some great photos, which I'll put on the screen. I've gotten some great photos with this camera, so don't let nobody tell you they don't use it for pictures. If I spent money on it and it can take pictures, I'm gonna use it for pictures. And I keep it at raw because, um, if I do take good pictures on it and I want to do some editing, then I'll like transfer it to my computer so I can edit it in Lightroom or even Photoshop. The fourth setting that I want to go over is the full HD movie recording size. I always keep it at the highest number for better quality. I always keep it there. Now, some people may have like 59.00p. If yours have it, then I would change it to that too, but mine's only go up to 50.00. This is the self timer setting, which is the fifth setting. Um, again, if I'm taking my own pictures, then I'll usually have self timer on. This ND off, which is reduces light and shot by applying internal filter. I never have this on again, like, if I'm gonna take a picture, like I don't really have a filter on. Again, I usually just edit it in Lightroom or Photoshop. And then ISO is always at auto unless I change it to movie manual so that way I can control the settings there. But again, mine's always at standard because you know the there's really not much that I need to control because everything, I never have any complaints with the um, default settings. This is the auto white balance. Honestly, I would honestly never change this. All the other ones are like, they're cute or whatever. I guess it depends on your preference and like where you are, but I never have an issue. I always keep it an auto white balance for like the best quality videos. This one is the picture style. Honestly, I flip flop between the portrait as well as auto. Auto is all automatically gonna optimize your picture as it says here. But portrait, if you're doing like a close-up or like, again, vlogging, depending on you, if you want your skin to look smooth and your hair to look good, then yeah, you can have the portrait on. But for me, I always keep it at auto. It's not a huge deal for me to have my skin smooth and my hair to look smooth or anything like that. So it all depends on preference. And then the next setting on here is the auto lighting optimizer. You know what? I was playing around with this and I realized like, 
the best setting I've had is when I have this at the highest setting. So honestly, if yours is off, I would highly recommend that you have this at the highest setting. All right, so the setting, the other setting that I want to show you guys is when you're going into the menu to register your face. So you'll go into the first where the camera is and you'll go into the second setting and you'll click face ID settings and add to registry. So this is how you, it looks. This is me right here, it says Natalie. And it's always gonna register your face and you're always gonna be in focus because it has your face registration. So that's how you go into adding your face ID, or yeah, your face ID. You just add to registry, add new face, and then or add face info, whatever, and it'll just tell you keep your face in frame. You just take a picture and it's always gonna remember your face. So yeah. Honestly, if you guys want me to go over like any other set, I never really went into settings. I can quickly go over where I have my settings. Again, image quality, shooting information display. This is what this says. Reverse display on, yes. Image review, two seconds. You can always change this. I do be wanting to change this, like maybe like four, let's do four seconds. And then you go into the second one, which we already did. Autofocus method, you always wanna have that on. Autofocus frame size, normal. Digital zoom. I keep digital zoom off. For autofocus and manual focus, I keep off. Autofocus assist beam, I keep on. The safety manual focus, I keep on. If you ask me what any of those mean, I don't know, but it makes the image or video quality great. <laughs> so here's some more, which are some of these are all, um, some of these are the ones that we went over already on the main screen by clicking the Q. Again, we went over these. Wind filter, definitely keep this on auto. Um, I don't know why, but I would keep this on auto. All right, so here's the second folder. This is, I think these are just personal. I always keep my display high because I can't see. <laughs> and I need to be able to see things, especially in the dark, so I always keep this high. And of course, today's date so that when we transfer photos, it's usually the first photo you see. You don't have to go all the way up to find your photo. It's like right there. Lens retraction, I keep at one minute, but sometimes this can drain your battery. So it's based off preference if you want it to retract right away or take its time if you're still using it. Hits, hints and tips, I always want to keep on because again, like you're always going to be learning your camera. So there's nothing wrong with keeping these things, keeping that on. Wireless settings, if you guys, you know what, I'm not even gonna say if, I'm gonna go over it. So the wireless settings, I can go over it with you guys. You can always change the name of the um, of the name of the camera here by just clicking here. Wi-Fi settings, I keep with password on, resize for send sending. No, you don't wanna resize it. Um, NFC's on, if you guys um, have that. That's just the Wi-Fi settings. Let me see if I can go into, well, I don't remember, oh, this is where. So you click here for your Wi-Fi. Once you click that and you have the app, that's how you're able to transfer your photos. But I can show you guys the device I use to transfer my photos onto my phone. So this is the device I use when transferring my, um, my SD card pictures or videos onto my phone. So what I'll do is I'll put the SD card into the device, which you can see here is for SD cards. And once that's in, I grab my phone and then I'll insert the device into my phone. And then once it's in, you go into your photos and then you'll hit import. Once you hit import, you'll see all your videos and your pictures. And then once that's in there, you'll hit select and it'll tell you like if, like let's say this was a vlog I did. And then you'll go into import and I'll ask you import all import selected and you'll hit import selected and then it'll download within like less than a minute, honestly, depending on how big or small your um your videos or pictures are and once that's done it'll ask you if you want to keep or delete and usually i either delete it but once it's deleted and once i've downloaded everything i just remove the device and then that's it all your images and stuff will be right on your phone so i'll have this linked in the description 
And I'll also have my Amazon storefront linked in my description because I have a folder of influencers must have and you'll be able to see this and all the good stuff that you could use when, do, oh, when doing YouTube or TikTok. If you guys want to see what I use for my settings for my Canon EOS M50 as well as my as well as my Sony A6000 which sometimes I would use let me know and I'll go ahead and create a video for these as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed.